Dr. Strongen presents the dehydration of cyclohexanol. Today we're going to perform an acid catalyzed dehydration of a secondary alcohol via a carbocation intermediate. Safety considerations for this experiment include being aware of never heating a solution to dryness, never heating a closed system in which pressure builds up, and to not overfill glassware with liquid to be distilled. Wear your goggles at all times and always handle glassware and chemicals while wearing gloves. Have your instructor check your setup prior to use. When a mixture of cyclohexanol and catalyst is heated in a flask equipped with a fractionating column, the formation of water is soon evident. On further heating, the water and the cyclohexene formed distill together. However, any remaining high boiling cyclohexanol starting material refluxes and is returned to the flask. After dehydration is complete and the bulk of the product has distilled, the column remains saturated with water cyclohexene that merely refluxes and does not distill. Hence, for recovery of otherwise lost reaction product that does not distill, a chaser solvent is added and distillation is continued. A suitable chaser solvent is water immiscible technical grade xylene with a boiling point of about 140 degrees centigrade. As its steam distills, it carries over the more volatile cyclohexene. When the total water insoluble layer is separated, dried and redistilled through the dried column, the chaser again drives the cyclohexene from the column. The difference in boiling points is such that a sharp separation is possible. Let's set up the experiment. First, pack the fractionating column loosely with about 8 tenths gram of copper sponge. Insert the thermometer carefully into the three-way connector fitted with a cap. Grasp, twist, and gently push. If it does not go through the opening easily, moisten the glass. Push an O-ring up on the other side of the thermometer. Adjust the height of the thermometer so that the top of the mercury bulb is a little below the sidearm and tighten the cap. Attach the connectors to both ends of the fractionating column. Attach the three-way connector to the top end of the fractionating column and at the bottom attach the microvial. Clamp the fractionating column to hold in place vertically. On the side arm of the three-way connector, attach a water-cooled condenser which leads to the receiver. Attach the condenser hoses, water in at the lower connector, out at the top.
wet the hose end for easier attachment. Adjust the water flow by picking up the outlet hose and turning on the water until you see a gentle, steady stream from the hose. Make sure the exit hose is placed down into the drain. Clamp your centrifuge tube chilled in ice in a beaker for support. Use cotton pads to insulate the exposed glass between the top of the column packing up to and including the area around the sidearm. Also, insulate the upper exposed part of the still pot. where it connects to the fractionating column. Keep the cotton pads out of the space between the pot and the heating surface. You are now set up. Have your apparatus checked by the instructor. See your manual for remaining instructions.